Hero get the job done against Bant Golos. This is the deck it's built to beat. Javier Dominguez, Seth Manfield, off you go. Taking a look at the opening hands here for Seth Manfield. Two guild gates and a Plaza of Harmony. Yeah, that's all right. No ramp, though, to start or to speak of. Got Golos, got two Hydra Crisis, and we have Teferi Time Rattler. So Seth knows the matchup that he's in, so I'm not surprised to see him mulligan that hand. Um, that's a kind of a sketchy hand that maybe you can keep in the mirror. You can certainly make an argument for keeping it against certain decks or an unknown opponent, but this is not an unknown opponent. We are playing here with public information, so Seth knows what Javier is on and vice versa. So I think actually a pretty easy mulligan there for Manfield. This is a much better hand, oh, yeah. and we'll see what Cardi wants to put away. This card has plenty action. Perhaps we'll see Time Wipe go away, but we do know that there are plenty of angry gruel creatures on Javier's side, so possibly Teferi is going to get sent back. Let's see what he sends. Is it going to be the Guild Gate? Yeah, this is a little bit interesting. I, I've known Seth for a very, very long time. Uh, it's funny because he's someone who does not like to mulligan very much at all. He's been known to keeping some sketchers, but what has made him and taken him from good to great is timely mulligans and assessing what cards to put away when he is mulliganing. So he'll take a moment here to figure out exactly what he wants to do and what card he wants to put away. It looks like he's having a decision between Teferi and Golgari Guildgate, and it looks like the very powerful Planeswalker from War of the Spark is headed to the bottom. So we won't see Teferi, at least not that one, for a very long time, once upon a time, being fired off and finding another mountain for Javier Dominguez. Pelt Collector is going to be the first play. It's going to get nice and big and bulky with the Paradise Druid or Crawl Harpooner coming up. But our Broil Grazer from Seth Manfield is going to get some more lands down on the battlefield. He's got his ramp going finding the circuitous route off the top of the library, too. Now, I will say this. If you are curious about how, how, how this game is going for Javier, I recommend you take a look at where he is sitting. Uh, he wears his emotion on his sleeve, uh, and then somewhere, Seth Manfield is the direct opposite. So Javier will let you know with his facial expressions and his body language how he thinks things are going. <laughs> Arboreal Grazer is the last card he wanted to see to start this game because his Pelt Collector really can't even get this party started. So he might just go to another Pelt Collector this turn, perhaps. Instead, he'll go towards Paradise Druid. His Puck Collector will get a little bit larger, but it cannot attack through the O3. Not yet, anyway. The Crawl Harpuna will also buff the Pelt Collector. Golgari Guildgate will be the play for Seth Manfield. He's got the Growth Spiral. Probably fire that off at the end step. Another mountain off the top for Javier Dominguez. Here yep. comes Pelt Collector, number two, you're seeing and some, Crawl Harpoon. You're seeing some sincere frustration here with Javier because once upon a time looks at five cards, he didn't find anything of note off of that, and then his draw steps has not been particularly good either. So it's on this ragtag group of creatures to get the job done. Pelt Collector and the Paradise Druid swinging in. Our Boreal Grazer is not going to do any damage to either, but can prevent some damage from the Paradise Druid. So getting in for three points, taking Seth down to 17. Growth Spiral fired off, finding a circuitous route. Needs oh, to find land number four Javier. and doesn't. I'm, I'm going to take a look at Javier, see if we get a little smile from okay. him now, because Seth missing a land with the Growth Spiral and not playing land for the turn and playing a, a Hydroid Crisis for one, Obviously signifies that, hey, he's got nothing going on. Seth does not draw a land, and let's go, Questing Beast. Good that draw is step. a super oop for Seth Manfield, and here comes the Questy Bro swinging in with the team. If not, why not? That's a buttload of damage. Excuse my almost French, but it is sincerely a lot to deal with here if you are Seth Manfield. And there are basically no good blocks here for Seth Manfield either. And there's almost, there's almost certainly no coming back either because he's missed a land. Yeah. Even if he finds a land, he could secure this route. That won't really do much of anything. So this game may have just ended right away. Hydra Crisis is going to trade with Paradise Druid. A Royal Gracer is going to get run down by Pelt Collector, which is going to trample over for a little bit. And this game with that missed land drop is over. Yikes, once upon a time, that's not going to help. I think Seth knows it's pretty much donezo. Javier Dominguez, Gruul Aggro doing what it needs to do. We're going to game number two. The Ouch. battle of world champions continues to rage on. Again, as I said at the top, as someone who played a lot of competitive magic in my life, you have to win the matchups you're supposed to win. If you identify a metagame in which you think you can take advantage of with a certain deck, when you get paired against the deck that you want to get paired against, you have to win the matchup. You can't give one away, and then you get paired against a deck that you can't beat. Javier has been up and down this weekend. He barely made it into day two of competition on breakers. He's up against, obviously, a great player, but the matchup is very good for him. He's got to take advantage of it, and he has done so thus far. What's going to help him in the sideboard here? <laughs> I love his deck name, by the way. YOLOS. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, for Seth, you know, obviously he needs, I mean, Oh, at the end of the day, he just he needs to hit his land drops. I mean, we're, we're talking about a deck that has uh, oftentimes 28, 29, and sometimes, like Brian Brown doing, 30 lands in it. Oof. So, you know, him not hitting a land drop off that growth spiral with the draw step is pretty rare. But now what he wants to do is he wants to interact. He's of course, has sweepers in his deck, Time Wipe, Realm Cloak Giant, so on and so forth. But he's also got Tulsmir to bring in and just more ways to interact. So he's going to want to bring those tools to game number two. And if we make it there, game three. Agonizing just a little bit, making sure he's got the correct configuration in his mind for this matchup. I bet a lot of the players this tournament haven't encountered much aggro, so they're like, oh, okay, I need to rethink this a little bit. I need to make sure I can survive to get to turn five, six, seven, where all my good stuff starts happening. Yeah, there isn't a ton of it here this week, and you know, we do see Mardo Knights in the hands of Ken Yukahiro and, of course, Ben Stark, and we've got the only Gruel player left in the tournament here in Javier Dominguez. So there isn't a lot of pure aggressive decks hanging out here this weekend. Makes a lot of sense, given how uh, some of the cards are laid out in this format, but there is a way to build a good one. Mm -hmm. It looks like Javier Dominguez has done so for this matchup, so we'll see if he finds a hand that he's happy to keep. I saw him shake his head. I'm just going to look at him. He doesn't like this hand either. <laughs> yikes. That's the face of a yikes, but he'll keep that one. That looks pretty good. Temple of Mystery scrying. Sending Securitas root to the bottom. Bit of an awkward hand. No blue and green available yet for Seth, so he's hoping to find that. Time wipe is not it, so Plaza of Harmony can enter the battlefield. Won't get him the life, though. Or it's just Field of the Dead. What do we do here? Yeah, this is a little bit of an awkward start here yeah. for Manfield, for sure. The Temple of Mystery was not particularly good. It means that he can't play the Girl Spiral right now, so his hand is just a little bit all over the place right now, if you're Seth. Whereas so, Happier's hand looks pretty good. I mean, it, it's getting a little bit better draw yeah. step by draw step. He, of course, would love to start the game with a Pell Collector, but a Paradise Druid means that he can actually do a little bit of ramping here. So Seth's draws are not cooperating, and mm -hmm. it's interesting because in a deck that does play a lot of different colors, a lot of lands that enter the battlefield tapped, and so on and so forth, you think that this Golos deck would kind of fail itself more often uh, than it does. This is a game where it's certainly starting to fail itself a little bit here, and now Spellbreaker is going to come on down and put some pressure here oh, on yeah. Seth. Oh, yeah. Javier Dominguez recognizing... Oh, and you could see the shake from Seth, who's usually cool as a cucumber. He knows that he's getting absolutely trounced by his deck. I mean, this How is rude. this is completely understandable, the frustration here, as Javier yeah. is going to lean back in his chair and say, all right, let's get some business Legend taken collapse, care of here. Perhaps. Yeah, I mean, get, get your damage in while you can. Oh, yeah. That is a massive spell break. We've also got Bone Crusher Giant that can deal two more points of damage to face, but we're going to see the Paradise Druid instead. There's a land, it gains a life, but it's not the land that Seth needs. And that is probably the quickest 2-0 we have seen. Gruul wants to go fast. It sure did. Javier Dominguez, 4-1. and one. He is one game away from day number three. Well, the Battle of World Champions goes to your current one there in Javier Dominguez, who, of course, wears his emotions on his sleeves. I'm hoping he'll have the opportunity to chit-chat with Becca here in just a moment. But you can see both these players, there's no real excitement or anything like no. that. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Seth really didn't get to play that game, unfortunately, for him. He kept some, uh, I mean, somewhat sketchy hands. I think the second one is a keep. And, and the first one was a good enough mulligan. But things did not work out for him. They'll shake good sportsmanship and all of that stuff. But I can understand why Seth is frustrated and why Javier is not celebrating that uh, win. But I always feel bad when my opponent never gets to actually play their game. And just being stuck on lands this or is, not finding this it. This is an interesting feeling that you're talking about. I'm not terribly familiar with what that is. <laughs> but what I can tell you is a win's a win's a win's a win. A win's a win's a win. At the end of the day, Javier <laughs> got paired against the matchup that he wanted in this tournament. He took advantage of it as yep. he's supposed to. And now he gets the chit chat, which is awesome. <laughs> Sending it over to Becca. Let's hear from Javier. Javier.